Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM22 story, Rebuilding Helsingborg, with me, Daniel. It's part 10 today, and it's a very decisive stage of the save, because as you can see from the league table, we started the season well until the last two games, and we have played a lot of the mid-table and expected to be lower downsides this year, and in fact the highest face side in the current table we played are Van Armo, who got promoted with us and are just three points behind. But now, we're just starting to drop off, we're just starting to get injuries, and we face two of the pre-season favourites who are right on our tails. So this is where we could start to get found out after a good start. But if you're looking forward to finding out if we do, then please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content. It's a big season in the Hemel Save. You can find that one up in the eye above. The link to the brand new season is there. There's also a link to the Twitch channel, the football podcast and the merchandise store too. And you can support the show as a channel member by clicking the join button down below. But thank you as always for your incredible support as we return just starting to experience our first dip of the season. Now we're coming towards the end of that month where we've been playing two games a week every single week. And it's really started to catch up in the last couple of games. Albeit, it wasn't fatigue that cost us the first time we dropped points. So let's get straight to the schedule and see what's been happening. Of course, you were here at deadline day last time. We're trying to bed all those new players into the squad. And in the early weeks, it looked like it was going to be phenomenal. But it's starting to go wrong. And now we're facing five of the seven teams that were expected to finish above us in succession before the cup final at the end of May. Now I have to prioritise that because that is our immediate route into Europe and winning a trophy. Those of you that have been on the channel here for a long time will know I'm trophies over league position every time. But I worry about what the next five games will bring. Let's go back to the positive start though. We had that early scare against Degafors before blowing them away. We then beat Varnamo, who have probably been the other surprise package of the season by three goals to nil. Tahar Ali again was on form. Hendrickson and Lingman got a goal apiece. Against Elsborg, we won by four goals to one. Lerpa, Vandenhoek, Hendrickson and Netabai off the bench. For a 1-0 win against your gardens, Lingman with a late one there. And then away to fellow promoted side, all great. We won by two goals to nil. Lingman and Kasper Vidal with a set piece before the rot started. And the serious one was really frustrating. They're only on four points, one of them against us. And it was because of an early bit of stupidity from one of our new signings. Espen Garna sent off for a wild challenge in the 11th minute. Victor Lundberg then actually gave us the lead despite playing on the right of midfield. But we were pegged back and in the end we were quite fortunate to hang on for a point. Then even more frustratingly, at home to a Rebro, we were absolutely brilliant but got done by one moment in attack. Lerpa picked up another knock which is a concern. If I show you the stats for this game, we'll give you an indicator of what I mean. They had one shot and scored it. We had 18, 8 on target, didn't take a chance. That's the frustration at the moment. We're having a lot of problems with fatigue. And you're going to see the brunt of that today against AIK. We've got to then make decisions about how we're going to manage the squad in the build-up to the cup final. Particularly with a game the two Sundays either side. Do I throw the Hammerby League game to try and win the Hammerby Cup game? I think it might lead to that. But then looking at the table, Hammerby are currently the main rivals for the title. Because they are right up on 14 points. They've got the best goal difference of those sides at the top. But with it being so tight, we've talked about it before. Even in the second tier with the Swedish leagues, they're so tight and compact. Lots of draws, lots of teams that cancel each other out. And I don't know that at the end of the season, the table's going to look anything like that. So let's go and get into the first of our two games. We are facing AIK on the Wednesday night. We've got another game against last season's champions, Nurkapin, on Sunday. And we've got massive issues with fatigue. And with fitness. If I head to the team selection screen just to show you the condition of some of these lads, 20,000 through the gate tonight, we have got this problem. Three players out there, another three that are tired Tahar Ali, Hendrickson, Lingman, Lerper, all included in that. And that's probably not even the worst we've had in recent weeks. So, definitely a suggestion that we're going to have to throw some games soon. But after this week, we're back to one a week until that cup final. So, there are some positives to come. This, in the end, is the side we've opted for. I think it's the strongest we can put out. We've got to put some of the tired players on the bench because there's nothing really behind it. granaf has been out injured and otherwise we're fairly short of options. So we've got Jolson in goal who has now become our number one. He's doing pretty well in fairness and still improving. So 
I feel now there's no threat of relegation. It's the right time to bring him in. Sivis is at right back due to injury. Tersic over on the left. Weyberg and Vidal back in the middle. They've not been able to play together often enough this year, which has been a bit of an issue. We've got Almajed, Velokia and Valencia at the midfield three. I've switched them round actually because I want the left footer on the left-hand side. Makes sense for the game. We'll adapt the roles when we get into it. Then Lundberg and Kaid, the backup wingers, with Vanden Herk up front. On the bench, the likes of Netabai, Rios, Hadjin and Garnas. But the rest of them, I aren't really fit to be honest. So let's go and get into the first of today's games. This is a real test for the depth of our squad. I'm not too sure where the goals are coming from at the moment. If Vanden Herk's out of form, we're normally in a lot of trouble. And as we head to the lineups, you'll see some familiar names in there, but the time we were most successful last year is when we could name the same team every week. Here it's just not possible. We've made five changes from Sunday's game. They've got Sebastian Larsen in midfield. They've got Mikael Lustig at right back. Two names very familiar to British football fans. Some good young players in the squad as well. Nordvelt in goal, the former Swansea man. I mean, it's just a class side. So we know this is going to be tough. AIK finished third last season. They were pipped to second by Malmo on the final day. They're strong. They've got experience. They've got depth. So you'd expect them to be favourites. You'd expect them to do well. Let's switch our midfield roles. We're going to put Velokia as the box-to-box, -box, which is what he's stronger at. We're going to put Valencia as the centre midfielder on attack. And let's hope that as we head into the first half, we can produce a miracle away at one of the big boys of Swedish football. Well, 20 minutes on the clock. It's been a pretty quiet start. We have just about edged the stats, but not seen anything yet. And here we are playing out from the back rather riskily, but we get away with it. Velokia picks the ball up in the middle. Not had a huge amount of starts so far, but this game is probably the perfect one for showing the depth we've added in the summer. We've got the two fullbacks in. We've got two centre midfielders in. We just haven't got the depth up front, which maybe is the issue. A Civis on the right-hand side. Got to say Rios, who I was excited about signing on deadline day. And the only one that I really put more influence in than Grankfist. Probably the only one that's flopped a bit so far. So maybe I should just leave them all to him. As Weber gives it to Almaged and Velokia. Then a great passing move. Finds Valencia to Lundberg. Shoots from distance. And that's the issue. We haven't got that pace and that guile to get in behind one-on-one. -on -one. They're often shots from in front of the defence and just opens them up to blocks and saves that we wouldn't normally have. But we have had more of this game so far. I worry about fatigue as the match goes on though. I'd assume AIK have played at the weekend too though, so maybe that will affect them later on. As Vanden Herk puts Kaid in. It's basically a battle of our backup side against their tired side. As Tursic shoots! First goal for the club! It's a daisy cutter as well. It was a bit of a tiddler along the floor, to be honest. It didn't have much oomph to it. Seemed to go through a few bodies, but it's a deserved lead. And to be honest, AIK look weary. I wonder if we can get their fitness up. Shall we see what they're like in comparison to us? We've got a long throw to deal with first, though. A Civis into Kaid. Headed away as far as him again. To Weyberg and Tosic. Into the back post to Lundberg. And he's headed straight at Norvelt. They get away with one there, AIK, but this has been a really strong first half performance. It basically comes down to whether we're going to be clinical in front of goal or not, and how do we defend, because Lustig's put Hussein in last minute of the half, and Stefanelli has just put a guilt edge chance over the bar. The keeper was basically beaten, and he somehow missed the target, as Weber comes out from the back again. Time in possession to go wide, just carries the ball forward, finds Kaid, who's had a good game off the left today. Weyberg finds Almajed and Tersic to Weyberg to Almajed. Again, very comfortable on the ball. We're starting to find our style again despite the signings. Starting to play a bit more like last year with Valencia. Out wide to Kaid on the left. Intercepted but falls for Velokia. And Kaid again, two in the middle, gets to the byline. Cuts it back to Vanden Herk. He needed a goal. He's got his fifth of the season. And I tell you what, if this is one of the best sides in the league... Maybe we have got a chance at Europe because we're blowing them away. Half time, 2-0. Let's have a look at their fitness though to see how it compares. And I think we've just got our reasoning as to why this is so comfortable. Because how many times have we talked about AI management? Seriously, and I'm going to try not to get frustrated. He's got seven fully fit players on the bench, the manager. And he's clearly just picked the same 11 that played on Sunday that are all knackered. So even for us by rotating and putting in a slightly weaker side... We're just overrunning them because they've only got two players in the team that are actually half fit. It's phenomenal mismanagement of training, conditioning and team selection by the AI manager. It's done my head in throughout FM22. I'm not going to go on about it too much, but 
we're starting to see familiar patterns and this this in a nutshell this screen is why we're able to overachieve as the human manager so much because when there's fixture congestion the ai just isn't adapting at all let's get to the halftime team talk on the pitch things are going fantastically it's a brilliant victory so far and that fitness would suggest they're not coming back into it anytime soon unless they've got three quick lads on the bench they can chuck up front I think this one's going to be pretty safe. So we'll get to the hour mark, then maybe we can look at resting our own. As Otieno's got a throw on the left for AIK, who are trying to change that. Scrab picks it up now to Gustafsson, into Sebastian Larson, and Bahui through all two, saying it's a poor start for us there. But it goes wide at the post. Not the best finish, but definitely alarm bells ringing in that defence. No changes made by the manager as well. So it looks like they're going to carry on with this fatigue side, although one has finally come on now. As we approach the hour mark with the ball on the left, Tersic finds Kaid, plays a 1-2 with him. You can see we're quicker to the second ball every time as Valencia gets it to Lundberg. Goes wide to Sivis. He's starting to play well here, finds Lundberg again. And from the byline, he can cut it in, doesn't need to, waits, just shields the ball. And it's a stupid challenge to bring him down. It's going to be 3-0 if Van den Herk can convert this penalty. And then we can rest Kasper Vidal. Van den Herk steps up into the top corner. Really good penalty from him, and on comes Espen Garnas. Got sent off last time he was on the pitch. Today, he can make amends. And we're back just a couple of minutes later. I'm really interested to see what the fresh legs can do for them here. Not a lot, because Almajed wins it on the right. Finds Sivis, who's up to Valencia and Lundberg. And let's be honest, this could get really ugly for AIK. If we've got fresh legs coming on again, Van den Herk picks it up. He's on a hat-trick. Got Valencia with him. Finds Kaid in one-on-one. -on -one, onto his left foot. He cuts it back to Van den Herk. There's the hat trick. 4-0 in an hour. We're playing against a side that are absolutely exhausted. Haven't rotated at all. I mean, look at their back four. It's knackered. And it almost feels bad because we've got such a physical advantage. We can now pick two more players to rest. Van den Herk will, of course, be one of them. Rios might even be able to get himself a goal today. Netabai is the only other fit player on the bench. So let's get him on for Almajed, who is the other first choice player playing. Netabai will come on in centre midfield and we'll leave them back the original way round. Two left footers in there, it's not ideal, but we'll make it work for now. Quarter of the game left, 4 0 up, and they're back four. It can barely move. And I guess despite our frustrations at the team selection and management of the AI, the benefit is that Nurkapin have got the same because they're 4 0 up in theirs as we've conceded a great goal there. One of the substitutes puts it in as well, his first of the season. So he must have enough ability to be on their pitch. It doesn't make sense. Why is he not in their lineup when he's got fresh legs and he can make a difference? We're going straight from the kickoff again, so I'm not sure how this is going to pan out. Garnas in the middle to Valencia and Velocchia to Rios the sub. Be nice to see him get a goal at some point as Lundberg into Kaid again just under hit. Mikhail Lustig gets it away. It's up to four as a centre forward, but Garnas intercepts and he gets it wide to Lundberg. Time in possession, back to Sivis and Garnas. We're just making them chase. Valencia playing well in that deeper role now. Back to Weyberg and Tosic. To Velokia, up to Netabai. Edge of the box, shoots, it's a wonderful finish. Caresses it into the corner, it had plenty of whip on it from the left footer. And I've got to say, the rare occasions he's been fit and played, he's really looked a goal threat for us. Nurk have been winning handsomely as well, so they're going to be right up in the title race. I want to have a look at the lad who came on, who scored the goal for them though, to see whether or not he should be good enough to start. As Sivis puts a cross in, Tersic up, and he's headed just over the bar, but this has ended up being the easiest game of the season, and that's really frustrating. So the goal scorer is Zach, but he's good enough to come in for a game. Irish winger, bags of pace, lots of quality. He's probably a similar level to the likes of Kaid and Lundberg, who we're playing, but with slightly more pace. So the substitutes they have bought on, there's no suggestion that they're not good enough to come in for these midweek games ahead of playing absolutely knackered 35-year-olds. I mean, Kusu is the third sub there. He's better than any of our midfielders. Call me too simplistic, but surely he is a better option than this guy who's absolutely knackered. Bill always saying they're very similar ability. So why not just bring the other lad in from the start and then this result doesn't happen. AI mismanagement is frustrating me and the fact that I'm annoyed after a 5-1 win tells you just how desperate I am for a big challenge here. So we're going to tell the lads they did really well because on the pitch we were absolutely fantastic. 
Now it's Nurkapin at the weekend, who won comfortably, should have been able to rest a few in midweek. Let's see how we get on against them at the weekend. Two points separate us at the top. Essentially, whoever wins will finish the episode in top spot. Well, it's fitness test time. We're back for Sunday, and I'm almost dreading seeing the state of the Nurkapin fitness, because ours isn't going to be great, but we know how to manage that. Will our rivals be able to do the same? They are the defending champions in Sweden. They will go top if they beat us today. I expect them to produce the goods. Whether or not that will happen, we'll wait and see. Ironically, AIK played again yesterday. They won at Malmo, who are having a shocking start to the season. Didn't make a single change. They were all completely out of it by the end. It was just madness. Let's go and get into it, though. Nurkapin are the visitors to Helsingborg. We've got only 7,000 coming in again. It seems like we'd expect a little more now, I'm not sure. But we're going to get the opposition instructions on. We're going to see who's fit. It looks like Lerpa is one of those who can make it. All by one of the players that played for us in midweek are fit. And some of the others who were left out are now back as well. So let me sort out this 11 and we'll be back in a minute to run through it. Okay then, here we are. And I think it's important at this stage that I mention one of the main reasons that Jolson's come in as the keeper. And one of the other issues that we've experienced as a result of the summer transfer window, or the winter transfer window as it was, and Grangfis work. One of the rules in the top tier of Sweden is that nine of your 18-man squad must have been trained or homegrown in Sweden and have trained there for three years by the age of 21. Now, when we had a couple of injuries, we were on the cusp of it. We were on nine most weeks. We're on nine or ten today, and Anders Lindegaard isn't one of them. So, Jolson is going to be number one for that reason only, I'd imagine. If we have a look at our squad for today, though, there are a few changes coming in. So, we've got Granath back at right back after a few weeks injured. Gives us the extra weapon with the long throw. We've got Hendrickson and Lingman back in the middle, the usual duo. Lerper and Ali, the usual wingers back. But the core of the team, aside from that, has stayed the same. Same two centre-halves, keeper, holding midfielder and striker. And we've also got Tersic staying in at left-back. A few on the bench who are real high quality, but we've got a strong squad. Nurkapin, I'm interested to see what their fitness is like. I guess that's going to be one of the key factors for the rest of the season. Are we now, because we're going to a game a week after this, are we now going to see the true strength for the other Swedish sides? Because they're not going to have to manage their squad as much. And as we've seen, they're incapable of that. That probably benefits the other sides more than it does us. Let's submit the team, though. It's a big game tonight. Hopefully, we can come out on top or at least get the draw that keeps us top of the league. Well, into the start of what has almost turned into an early title decider here. I'm sure Nurkabin will come out on top in the end. I recognise one name on the bench, Ari Skullison. But there's not too many in the squad, I know. So let's just go and get straight through to this. They've made three changes. They've actually rotated a bit. We've made five again. Hopefully we can get the lads to put on a worthy display. Prove a point. We've got them all motivated. We've got them all on side. So let's get through the tunnel interview. This is a big one. Hopefully we can get over the line. And I should mention now we've got it up. There's a slight fitness advantage. They've got three or four that are just off it a tiny bit. But... The rotation has made amends for most of it, so much better than the AIK game. Maybe that's just good management, as in the middle it's Nyman. Abdul Razak in a holding role. Is that the one that used to play for City as a youngster? I'll have to look him up after. I keep getting distracted by this. Those of you that have been here a long time will know that happens all the time, as they've got it in the middle again. They've start, certainly started the more confident in possession. Plenty of composure, not in a rush to get it forward. And they're making advantage of the space here. They're dragging us all over the place as it's through to Sam. It's a good save from Jolson. Behind for a corner kick. But Nurkapin, definitely the better side. We've got defending to do here from a set piece. It's so going to be taken out swing up from Markovic. To the back post, well headed clear by Tersic. And it'll be chased by Tahar Ali. Brings it away, but no counter attack to see. So at the moment, it remains goalless after half an hour. So that Abdul Razak is not who I was thinking of. Ari Skoulison, though, on the bench, now 34. He was part of that original Arsenal Academy in 2005, the first FM I ever played. And he was one of the superstars in there. There were loads of them about that youth academy. Sebastian Larsson being one, ironically, who we played in the last game. But as we head into the second half, we're yet to muster a shot on target. And we're not really playing that well. But if we could get a nil-nil, it'd keep us top of the league and it'd keep our great start to the season up. So with a quarter of the game to go, we're going to make some changes. We're just going to try and freshen things up. So Rios can come on up front. We're going to take off Hendrickson for Johan Valencia. 
and I'm going to gamble by taking Tahar Ali off for Adam Kaid, who was absolutely brilliant in the game in midweek. So with 20 minutes to go, let's see if we can nick a winner. Anything other than a defeat is a very good result here. And actually, towards the end of the game, we're probably looking slightly less fresh than them, if anything. And they're on the front foot, trying to put the pressure on. As the long ball forward goes straight to Jolson, they've not ultimately got that cutting edge in front of goal. As Weyberg plays out to Lingman. We did nick a late winner in one game earlier this season. Wouldn't mind doing it again. When Rios holds it up up front, it would be lovely if he could get off the mark today. Make himself a hero as Kaid. Goes back to Almajed and Lingman. Has support from the sub Valencia. Plays through to Kaid. He's in one on one. Adam Kaid has scored. 85 minutes gone. And it's all the more frustrating knowing that this isn't the best squad in the league by any stretch. But at the moment, we've just got the better squad management. We've got the confidence, the momentum from coming up by winning the title. And we just seem to be winning nearly every game. We're finding a way to do it. And against two of the best sides in the league, we've blown one away, we've edged past the other, but now we go to a game a week. The AI hasn't got to manage squad fatigue or fitness, and maybe that's where it starts to fall down. But given the two results before I came on camera, I didn't expect this today. So we're now top by four points, not really what we were hoping for, we wanted a bit more of a challenge. But let's have a look at the schedule for a minute, it's going to be back, and you can bet your bottom dollar it will include a cup final. Well, if the worry was that we were going to start to fall away when we faced all the top sides, then those two wins give us a bit of confidence to suggest otherwise. However, we are going to come back for double hammer beat in a couple of days' time. They're one of the top sides in the league. We've got them in the cup final. And if we win that, we're in the Europa Conference qualifiers, which would be a quite frankly ridiculous achievement. I would have shown Helmstads instead, but they're bottom of the league. So let's have the tough challenges on camera. I should also very quickly mention that since the last episode, we did loan out the two players that were pending at the time. They were Sujic and Benjamin Aqua. But we are going to be back for the Swedish Cup final. A chance to make Europe in our second season of this save. Albeit not via winning a league. But that doesn't look beyond the realms of possibility either. So let me know down in the comments what you think of this. Because for me, I've had many debates about FM being too easy. We had a vote on the community page recently. And most of you said no it's not. I'm in the minority that seems to think it is. But the AI squad management and what we saw in midweek against AIK just isn't right for me. But if you did enjoy this episode and you're looking forward to seeing how we get on for the rest of the year, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM22 content from two long-term stories. A few more challenges in the Hemel save. You can find the latest season of that in the eye above. There's also links to the Twitch channel, the football podcast and the merchandise store too. But I'll see you here again next time for the Swedish Cup Final. A place in Europe up for grabs against Hammerby.